I wanted to do a channel update. Uh, today was going to be video day. It's approaching noon and I already haven't gotten around to it. I just get caught up in so many other things. <clears throat> Alright, um, past month or so. A lot of activity, a lot of interaction with my subscribers. Um, a lot of support coming in, a lot of questions, a lot of stuff going on. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everybody for their support in that, that they sent me. And also, uh, when I asked, I kind of closed out trying to arrange all my things uh, because <clears throat> we still don't have gun shows in North Carolina or whatever. <clears throat> and I doubt we will. And uh, a lot of the stuff I had in inventory for the gun shows, the military ammo and that, uh, is not what panic buyers are looking for. But there was a lot of interest. Um, all of my ammo that I had, gun show inventory and that is gone. And I'd like to thank you all uh, for picking that up. There were several different calibers and that. Uh, I got a clean slate now. And now we can see how this gun and ammo shortage goes and where we can pick up. So far, <clears throat> anyone who's tried my cast bullet, uh, I got a big demand for that. Actually, I think I must have cast seven, eight hundred bullets. They're all gone. Okay, between what I used for testing and what people requested. Some people bought the bullets from me. Um, this is going to go on the list. This is very popular. Anyone who's tried it, tried the bullet or the ammo, loves it, and they want more. Okay, so that's taken, that's in there. The next cartridge that people really asked a lot about was the 6.5 Japanese. I have to look in <coughs> to, to see about that. Uh, I was working on a 6.5 by 55 uh, Swedish Mauser, and I think I got a nice load for that, okay, but some people were asking about the French Long cartridge, and uh, I just did a video yesterday on that. Somebody sent me some ammo, and I think it looks like I found... Because that's another thing I've been casting. I've been getting caught up on casting, and I cast a lot of different bullets for a lot of different calibers. But the 7.65 French Long, the only decent bullet I think I can get, I was thinking about using that round P-shaped 32 uh, revolver bullet from Lee. But I found one because I've been going to Acura Bullet Molds and I'm picking up more molds because I got different guns and different calibers. I found uh, 7.65 Tokarev uh, Bullet Mold. That, I can go a little bit bigger. Okay, I think it's 311 and try that. Now somebody said slug the barrel or whatever. What I do with a cast bullet okay, in any gun, be it a rifle or whatever, and if I'm not using a gas check, people don't like gas checks because they're expensive, they're about a nickel a piece, a good uh, Hornaday crimp on one made out of copper or something, or brass. Uh, they like using them cheap ones, which they're not worth the money, I've tried them, they split, they're, they're made out of aluminum, they're junk. Gas check helps, keeping the base solid, round, and flat and seals and keeps the letting out. That's why I like them, okay? This doesn't have a gas check, but what you do if you can't get a gas check, and this also goes with rifle bullets, because uh, a lot of the black powder guns don't come gas checked, uh, the bullets I use. You go two, three, even four thousandths over the groove diameter and use soft lead, properly lubricated, without the polymer coating or any of this other crap, and that cuts down on the leading because you're sealing it, the lead gives. When you fire the projectile, the lead will actually mush down 
and instead of the old black powder where you're thumping an undersized bullet to knock it out, the bullet's already oversized. And if you're just careful and do it right, you can get good results. And that's the method I use. If I'm going to put a cast bullet in there, I'm going to go way oversized. But the kicker is sometimes doing this, when you put it in the brass, it makes the cartridge too big in diameter to fit in the chamber. So this is a tricky game. Okay, and sometimes if the one doesn't go, you might have to knock down the bullet with another sizing die, a thou or two thou, and get it just right. And then some guns, there's chamber variances, like with a 9mm. Okay, when you fool with this, but that's where we're going with the 7mm long, and I think that's the course I'm going to take. Because uh, I've had several bits of input about using the soft point bullets in that and, and everything else. <clears throat> now, the next big thing there is the Carcano screws, okay? I've been fooling around. I complained that I had to spend about 40 bucks, and somebody sent me the $40 for a die, which was the wrong one, but I got the gauge. Now, the thing about the screws and gun screws, if you ever go and look, like say you see standard hardware, quarter inch. You can get a quarter inch 20 quarter inch 24 bolt or 28 it's coarse and fine you usually have two and that's generally when you go to a hardware store what you find if you go into a machinist handbook and look at the chart in there an old one for the different thread sizes and specifications both internal and external you will find that in any particular size there are a lot more different thread pitches then just like 20, 28, there'll be 32, whatever, some odd stuff. There are a lot of standard threads that are specialized and not that common, but in the book you can get them. So what the problem is, our Carcano screw, and this is our little screw up in here that's kind of standard size, goes on all these different guns. Uh, it may be a little bit different on the early TS's, okay, the head diameter might be smaller, it has to go in that side mount bayonet lug. So most of these screws, and like this one here, you know, are dinged up, tore up, broken, stuck. And there's been a great demand, I mentioned something about making the screws, but a great demand, a, a bunch of input, and basically what we'd have to do as I went to Brownells like suggested and I got a screw blank hold it up there so you can see it against the white wall now the blank I believe I have the right diameter on the shaft but as you see it's a tad bit longer okay it's longer than what we need so like about this is like two and a half inches and I think the only, it's like an inch and an eighth. So a good chunk of this has to be cut off. Okay. Now once we cut it off, we have to get the right thread size. And then screwing around and two, three guesses which are wrong, come up with four millimeter by .75. Which I got to die. I tried it. It ain't right. I believe it, and that's coarse. So there's a finer version, which is probably a 4 millimeter 0.7, which would be a finer thread. And, and you've seen these screws, the threads are tiny and small, and even with the gauge, it, it's difficult to measure because it's more by feel, that gauge dropping down and locking in. Um, but, don't worry, I ran into a problem with it. I have a friend who resides in Italy. He sent me an email two days ago. He said, hey Mike, I've seen your videos. And the guy does, he, uh, he owns a metalworking shop, but he also does some of his own gunsmithing stuff, and he's the one that made the chargers for the Vetterly uh, rifle, the Italian Vetterly rifle. And he also makes his own ammo, okay, because over in Europe that's what you got to do. And I mean, they turn the cases 
for the Swiss Federally and the Italian Federally out of solid brass. I got a couple examples, I'll show it to you later. And he makes his own bullet mold, which makes a type of bullet for these guns also. So a lot of this stuff, this individual fabricates himself. He doesn't sell it, but he just showed me some examples of what he does. So he told me I had trouble with this screw. And uh, he said, don't worry about it. He told me, I've mailed you taps and dies, a couple different sizes, okay, that are common thread sizes used over there in Europe on these guns. He said, I'm sending you as a gift. He's sending me taps and dies, supposedly, to get this right. So not only will I have a die to make the screws, but I probably have the corresponding uh, tap that if the screws in your band are a little dinged up, you can run it through their chase and clean them up. So just be patient. It takes about three damn weeks for something to show up uh, from Europe going through the uh, coronavirus infested waters of the Pacific or the air or whatever the hell. But uh, we're making progress. Now, more on this, what you guys got to realize, I have to cut this blank to the length. Then what I would do is get the end flat, dress it, and in the old days when my hands were good, I'd just hit this wheel this on a grinder, put a little chamfer on there, run the uh, die up, cut the threads, no big deal. I've tried cutting threads on this. Now another thing is, and I get these comments from all these experts telling me that I'm doing all this wrong. Uh, if that's the case, go right ahead, make these screws, and then I will send all my subscribers right to you, and you can make a business or a ton of money or whatever. But let me explain to you how I'm going to attack this problem. All right, so first this blank, we got to cut it. The blank is soft. Now, where there's a drawback in this, it's easy to fabricate the screw, but then again, you push the screw through a swollen wooden hole and give it a real hard twist and you're going to have deformed screws and if you don't catch the thread right it'll tear the threads up. So even after I get it done and Brownells says when they sell you these blanks that's where I got them from Brownells says it would be a good idea to case harden heat treat or case harden screw once you get it into the shape that you need. These things do have some sort of finish, a black finish on them, but if you cut them, and another thing, the head, the diameter is too big. If it's on something like this, you know, this type of TS here, uh, just leaving it alone shouldn't be a problem. But if you're going with the older one with this uh, side mount bayonet where that screw goes into like a recess, this is going to have to be turned. So not only do I have to cut this, thread this, I'm going to have to fool with the head and also the slot in here I think is just a rough cut slot. This is like micro sized. I went to my gunsmith uh, screwdriver set and even the thinnest blade does not fit in here. So the slot will have to be widened. So not only do we have to cut it, thread it, turn and put it in the lathe, probably turn some off this diameter to get it to the correct diameter. This slot is going to have to be opened up. And I think, yeah, I can get a midget size, a little fine end mill and all that other stuff. And another thing, I do not have a complete mach machine shop downstairs. Okay, I can do a few odd things and I have a request if I can turn these screws out, I got a guaranteed sale of like 50, 60 of these. Okay, there's a big demand for it. All right. So probably the quickest and easiest thing for me to do would be hit this with a V file, open it up, and get a small needle file, square the right width, and then just open that slot up. Okay, take me some few minutes. But it's hand work, and that really isn't on center, is it? No, it's not. Assholes. 
But anyway, that's what it's going to take to fabricate these. Now, the guys that sent me some money in there, if I get something workable, I'll send them to you. And then, I forgot, when it's all said and done, when the screws, the heads are correct size, threads right, right length, slots cut, I believe case hardening these will be the next step. In other words, heat them up, drop them into powder, case harden them, and then stress relieve them, and then the screw is hard. So now, if it binds in that, you won't tear the screws up. Okay? So there's a little bit more than just cutting it, you know, sawing the end off, turning some threads on there, and just, you know. But I'm working on it. Okay? I've run into some setbacks on top of everything else I'm doing, and that's another thing. I'm, I'm answering a lot of emails. Uh, there are people interested in many different things that I fool with, and I do work with a lot of different things, okay? So, while these works are in progress, I'm also doing research for different guns. I got a number of Brundle rifles there's been several auctions, and in these weird times, people have a tendency to turn loose a lot of unusual guns. And it's kind of one of these deals when you see it, something come up. You grab it because it could be two, three years before you see them come up again. And I've gotten some Verndals. I'm going to start working with these guns. Um, there's three different types of ammunition. The very early guns use a straight case with a little bit larger diameter bullet a little over uh, I'd say about 500 and some thousandths and then the uh, these here the more common ones uh, use the bullet which is quite similar to the uh, 71 Mauser and the 7184 446 diameter bullet and then there are the carbines which now I have a few of them and I've recently got the dies, which is the 11.15 by 36 millimeter, uh, which is basically like a huge handgun cartridge, straight wall cartridge. Um, Going to start producing that. I've done work with the 11.15 by 58R, but I want to refine it. Go further, come up with an alternative maybe to make brass. So I'm looking at a few things because um, looking for Bertram brass, which is quite expensive, they're sold out. Okay, so uh, then I want to get back on my Vetterly Vitali and work on uh, those. I was supposed to make, I'm probably going to start making some videos today and then do an in-depth study because I really like these Italian 1870-78 mils. I really like shooting these guns. They're fun. Uh, they're a real neat gun. Okay. And another one on the list. Some of you guys that are kind of on the beginning collector and down there with the Carcanos and that and these uh, say sub $400 guns. Another one out there, and I've seen a lot of these up for sale. I did a search on the gun broker, and I didn't realize how many of these are. And that is, in my series on Vetterly Vitalis, Dutch Beaumont. Now, when I was in a chat room talking to some other people, younger people that were into collecting, a lot of them have mentioned this gun. This gun is kind of unique in its design. And like when I did the uh, videos about it, it has a very interesting history, okay? But truthfully, once I get the ammo perfected, and what I did was change a bullet, I tried to get something lighter, more similar. Uh, these things will shoot fairly accurately, okay? And the chambers are generous enough that I can bump up that bullet diameter and get it to shoot without letting. Okay, I can get an oversized bullet down this barrel, and I think these barrels are tapered. In other words, it's bigger towards the chamber, and the uh, barrel actually gets smaller as you go up a few thousands to the end. So it's uh, 
unique weapon, and they are quite common. I think I've seen in auctions uh, for like eight of these on a gun broker. The one thing I will tell you though is please stay away from the sporterized ones or cut down. You'll find them. There were companies that did that, you know, sporterize them, cut the stock down in that, and I will go over that when I cover this rifle here shortly of why you want to avoid that, okay, on these old design guns. So we're going to do some more work there. Um, then while I'm out on the range, I want to go shoot my Carcanos again. I want to shoot those 9124s and take them out to 100, 200 yards because there's a lot of question. I had them examples I bought. I bought the one from Buds and I bought the other one, I think, from, uh, if it was DK, no, I bought it from Palmetto State Armory. I bought uh, 24. Both of those shoot well. See, they have good barrels. The one or two examples I had had shot out barrels, and it doesn't matter whether it was a cut down rifle or not. If the bore is worn out, they're going to keyhole and shoot all over the place. Okay, I had a couple of the old Carcanos like that. It's just the, the bores are worn out. And then again, as you've seen in my videos, even if you have one, there's a guy who had a cavalry carbine that was keyholing on him, and he asked me if I can get him some uh, my cast bullets. And he went out, tried them out, and he said it, it did exceptionally well, and he's quite satisfied with the results. Now he can hit something with the gun, you know. So, you know, there's more work there. I, I've got a ton of requests for that. And in the middle of all this, probably now the weather's getting crappier here. I've been lucky. It's been warm. At least it ain't cold here in North Carolina. It's been very warm this past month. So I can work out in a garage but I believe I'm going to have to do a lot of bullet casting because the demand is there. So I'm going to work on that also. So I'm working on the screw. And another thing, now that I had some time and cleared my mind for a few minutes and sat down, I got up and I got a plan in my head of how to produce these. So uh, using my equipment, I'm constantly thinking of a way to do this in an efficient way and precise manner so you know you get something decent that works so that's about where we're going um, I'm working more with the antique guns uh, because there there's a lot of my subscribers you know a lot but there's a group of people that, that are really into this and the collecting not so much like the uh, Enfield Mauser World War II era and uh, we really like shooting these guns, and uh, it's, it is an interesting field, and I'm going to cover that too. But that's what's up on the, the list there, and like I said, very busy, very active, and I keep coming up with more stuff. So there's your update. Stay tuned, and 